So my grandmother's dying. Um, I say dying because actually, well, technically she's killing herself. So uh, this news I received about a week ago and it reminded me of why I really started making these YouTube videos. It was never really about like getting views or, you know, basically I just wanted a way of documenting certain things that go on in my life, um, really from my own just personal use. And uh, I think like putting it online just for why not, maybe somebody will get some enjoyment from it. But I kind of quit making videos for a while just because I got caught up in the bullshit. And um, then I got this news and, you know, I spent like uh, a year and a half in therapy when my wife and I were going through some things. And I realized like, why like pay a person to listen to the way you think and feel about shit? Like I might as well just sit in front of a camera and talk to it like it's a person. Then at the very least, I'll have a record of the things that I thought and felt at a certain time in my life and I can go back to them and reflect and I don't know, seems like a better way than spending a whole bunch of money on a therapist. So I'm going to sit here and talk about how I feel about my grandmother dying and how I feel is fucking disappointed. <laughs> um, that may sound strange, but um, just to sort of put in, in perspective, my grandmother, this is my dad on my mom's side, she's 95 years old. She is one of the strongest women I have ever known in life. Uh, she, I really sort of, as a child, I guess, like most kids do, you kind of deify certain people in your, in your life. And my grandmother has been the one person that I've held on a pedestal for really just the majority of my lifetime. You know, she was really... I don't know, she was just a really important figure in in my growing up and forming my views in the world and sort of learning how to navigate, you know, this life that we're living in. And like I said, she was always just this this absolute rock. You know, she was like that woman that, you know, didn't let you be beat up, like, you know, didn't let you feel bad for yourself. You know, if you trip and you skin your knee, you know, she wasn't going to baby you. You know, like you had to pick yourself up and let's dust yourself off and we're going to keep going. Like, you know, she didn't let you get down on yourself and, and dwell in your, in your failures. And, you know, and she was just that strong willed kind of woman. And so, um, that's the way she always lived her life. You know, nobody told her, nobody was going to tell her what she was going to do, except maybe my grandfather and very opinionated, very strong willed, you know, just typical old fashioned woman, you know, she she really formed my view for the way I thought all women were supposed to behave. And really no woman that I've ever met in life could hold a candle to my grandmother. You know, they, no woman could fill her shoes. And so when I found out that she was dying or that she wanted to die, like that part, I totally get like, she's 95. She's definitely not the woman she used to be, you know, She's gotten to that point in life. She can't get around real well. Uh, I guess, you know, in the last several months, you know, she's been in bed a lot. You know, she uh, getting weak. I mean, she's 95. That's the thing. Like, it may sound strange. I'm sitting here talking about how disappointed I am instead of how broken hearted I am. I'm not broken hearted about it. Like, she's lived a good life. Like, you cannot really ask for more than 95 years on this planet. You know, my grandparents... Uh, the two of them had four children that had children and grandchildren. I think the last count, my grandparents have spawned, I, I can't even remember. It's a lot of people from this one couple. They met when they were like 16 or 12. They, they were, you know, married out of high school. Like they've known each other their entire lives. They lived on the same street growing up. They are like the all-American love story, success story, you know, like, and I used to go to my grandmother all the time for relationship advice. And she'd give me these stories about how her and my grandfather made it. And, you know, they've been married for, my grandparents have been married for longer than most people will live. I think they're at 72, 75 years now. Maybe it's more than that. I guess they, 78 years. I mean, they, they were married, I think when they were 18 and they're 95 now, both of them. So whatever the fuck that math is. They've been married longer than most people will live. And so I guess the
the reason I say I'm disappointed is because, I don't know, man, like, she's starving herself to death, you know? Like, I talked to her on the phone the other day, and when I called her, I, I, she said, Michael, how are you doing? And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, what's going on with you? And she said, well, Michael, I'm trying to die. And I said, yeah, I heard, you know, what's up with that? And she said, well, um, I'm tired, you know, I'm tired of living. And the conversation could have ended right there. Like, I wish it had ended right there. You know, it was just like, I get that. Like, there's no fucking part of me that wants to live to 95. And the way I treat my body now, there's no chance that I'll get there. You know, I, I have no desire. I can't really imagine living beyond 70. Like, you know, that's the thing. Like, for the last, like, fucking 20 years, 15 years, well, yeah, 20, almost, <laughs> almost 25 years, they haven't really been able to do anything. You know, they sit in the house, they watch TV, they go, they go to family get-togethers, they sit there, you know, it's just like, why would you want to live that long? So the fact that she's done, like, I've got all the respect in the world for that. You know, and obviously, um, you know, Kevorkian's gone, you know, and we live in this fucked up world where for a woman as strong and powerful as my grandmother, the only real alternative is to lay there and fucking starve to death. And it, it's just, it's just a fucking travesty to me. It feels like quitting in this horrible way. Like, you know, go ride a motorcycle into a fucking brick wall, jump out of a plane with a pen and don't pull the ripcord. Like... I don't know, like, I just imagine that this woman who was larger than life for me for so many years wasn't going to just, like, she had to go out with a bang, you know? She had to go out in some way that was comparable with the life she lives. And I guess in sitting here talking about this, I realized that, you know, the life she lived, I mean, that's it, right? How could she have gone that would have made it, that would have brought it all together, you know? It's not a fucking movie. And I guess that's what I envisioned, you know, like, she was a fucking superhero, and there was going to be some huge climax at the end, and instead, she's laying in a bed, starving to death. She doesn't seem right, you know? Just seems like there's, um, there's gotta be a better way. So, you know, we talked on the phone and I, I don't know, I guess I was kind of angry, you know? I, I, what do you say? What the fuck do you say? You know? Here you are talking to this woman who was the foundation of one of the best parts of your life. And um, she's not like sick, you know? It's not like she has cancer, it, you know? And so I told her, I was like, Mama, I, I don't know what to say, you know? And she said, just tell me goodbye and that you'll take care of those babies for me. So that's it. 95 years and it's goodbye, I love you. I'll take care of your grandchildren, great grandchildren, <laughs> great grandchildren. And but best of luck. I don't know. I guess there was no ending that could have done her life justice. But I feel very lucky to have known such a great woman. I love you, Mamaw.